There has been so much interest about ChatGPT and what a better way to experiment with it by using Unity. Well, today we're gonna to be continuing our video series by adding ChatGPT HTTP client, which will be responsible for communicating with our API that we built in our previous video. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this video where we're gonna be integrating what we did on the previous one, which is to integrate the Python Flash service where we were able to call into this endpoint and then get the response back here, which is the response that comes from ChatGPT. So the goal for today is to be able to integrate this into Unity. So instead of actually using our HTTP call examples to make a post, we're gonna be making a post for Unity and getting that information to display in the canvas. So if I go here, you're gonna see that I have a UI already set up for you. This is very simple. I just have a button in here that we're gonna be using today. And let me go ahead and disable here the gizmos. So we're gonna be clicking on that and that's going to make, be making a HTTP call. Then we're gonna be displaying that information here in the actual code view. So this one I decided to do more of a scrollable view because we're gonna be getting a lot of coding here. So just know that the response is gonna be added and displayed here in the logger that text. So, Couple of requirements that I'm going to be putting in the description of this video is you're gonna need this core folder here, which is gonna contain a logger and a singleton. And I'm using the logger in here to basically write to this text box. And the singleton, I'm gonna be using it to be able to create a single instance of all the different classes that we're gonna be creating for this project. So the first thing that I'm gonna be focusing today is gonna to be a couple of different contracts and settings that we're going to be needing. So the first one is going to be a ChatGPT settings that is going to know how to communicate with the service. So I'm just going to create a new C Sharp script and this one we can call it ChatGPT Chat GPT settings. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And this one is going to be a scriptable object. So let me go ahead and open it up. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. So this one is basically going to go into a scriptable object instead of the mono behavior. I'm also going to be adding an option in here to be able to create this asset. So create asset menu. The file name of this is gonna be chat GPT settings. Make sure you put that around quotes. And then I also want to have this available into a specific menu name. So we can just put this on chat GPT, chat GPT, and we can say chat GPT settings. That way everything is going to be organized in that area, we can get rid of all these because we don't need the star meta and that other meta. So we can just say public a string API URL. And then I'm also going to be needing a string. This one is going to be API key. Right now, ChatGPT doesn't provide these, but I'm just building it right now in a way that we can swap it as soon as ChatGPT has that available as an API. And then I'm also going to be adding a string of basically replacements. And this is so that we can inject different variables into this. Actually, this one is gonna be called reminders because we're gonna be adding different things that I want to be sending to ChatGPT over and over and over. And if you remember, this debug is what we're basically adding to be able to display the, the actual question and also the answer received from ChatGPT on the service. So we can just do that. The other one that I'm gonna also need to create is gonna be a contract. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go here and we can add uh, a new c -sharp file. This one is going to be the request that we're gonna be sending. So I'm just gonna call this one chat GPT request, and then hit enter. And this is gonna be just a POCO, a very simple c -sharp script. And then I'll just do that. It's gonna be public chat GPT request. On the request, I'm gonna be sending the question, right? This is gonna be the JSON one that we're going to be creating and sending to the service. So I'm just gonna do a getter and a setter. And then I'm also going to be using, because we're using the JSON, I'm going to be declaring a couple different names in here. So I'm just gonna rename the property of this to be property name and make sure that I add the namespace. So you can do control period and add new and soft that JSON. And then for this, I'm gonna say property name and the property name of this is going to be just question. Basically, you could designate these as a global setting to make all your properties lowercase in JSON. I'm just going to de decorate them in here. And then we can just do something like that. I don't like to add the namespace, at least not for what we need today. 
And that's going to be this object. We're also going to need to do a response object. So we can do that. And then what we can do to do a response object, it's going to duplicate that object. And then this one is just going to be called response. And then let's go ahead and hit enter to rename it. And then we'll just rename it in here. It's going to be response. And then in this case, it's going to go ahead and do reload. In this case, we need to do get all the actual data from what we got from ChatGPT. So I'm going to go ahead and change this property here to be so data. So we can do that. And then this is just going to be the data that we're getting back into this object. So those are going to be the two ones that we need. Normally settings, I normally don't put them under contracts. I'm going to put it just right under ChatGPT. And then once we do, when we start integrating a Sketchfab, we're also going to have one settings for that. So we'll create a folder for a Sketchfab to be able to do that. So that looks great. So now what we need to do is we need to work on the actual client that is going to do the communication. So we have a client in here, but it doesn't have any implementation. I actually did this on purpose. It's just ChatGPT client and it's using my singleton, which I show you that we needed to bring in, which is basically this one right here. And what we need to do here is we need to go ahead and implement it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a serializable, serializable field and serialize field. And let's go ahead and do control period to bring that in. And this one is going to be, we can make it private and serializable field will make it to be exposable through the inspector. And then this one is going to be my settings, right? So I'm just going to say chat GPT settings. And we're going to be basically associating that through the inspector. So that's why I did that. I'm also going to be needing a public method in here, which is going to be an enumerator. And we're also going to need to bring that to the name spaces. I'm going to be allowing, you know, to ask a question in here. So we can just, you know, have the question that we're going to ask. Then the question that we're going to ask is going to be passing to prompt. And then the action that we're going to need here when this executes is going to be the actual response that we got from ChatGPT. So I can just say ChatGPT response, and this is going to be my callback, right? So we can do something like that. So the next thing that we need to do, though, is I need to pull the URL from the settings. So I'm just going to say URL equal and then ChatGPT settings. And I want to make sure that if we are in the bug, that I add the debug flag to the URL. So I'm just going to do here my interpolation. And then we can say ChatGPT. We can check to see if the bug is set to true. If it is set to true, though, I'm going to just basically append this. And then we can just say true. Otherwise, what we're going to do is just going to put in the, the actual URL. So we can just do the API URL in here. So this is going to allow us to, and this one right here actually needs to be API URL. So basically, if the bug is set to true, we're going to grab the API URL and then append the bug equal true. Otherwise, we just do the actual URL. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Unity, a Unity web request. Do control period to bring in that networking and then do request equal to, we're going to be getting a new request. We need to pass in that URL that we're going to be doing. And then this could be an enum right now. We can just hard code it to, to post, but you can do a get, you can do a post, a head, different, you know, all the different HTTP methods can be used with these Unity web requests. So once we have that, we need to get our bytes and it's going to be basically the body that we're going to be sending to the service. And then it's going to do equal and then system, the text, we need to encode this. I'm just going to do encoder and encoding. And then this is going to be UTF-8 and then we're going to be getting the bytes. And the way that this is going to work though, is we can just do that. And then inside what I'm going to do is I'm going to do JSON convert again from the unsoft. And we can just be bringing that namespace in here. We're going to be serializing the object and the object that we're going to be serializing is going to be basically the chat GPT request object that we just created. And I want to pass in a question. So I'm just going to say prompt and the prompt is a, a string. So that type is going to work just fine. And then all I need to do here is just do, I think I need one more parenthesis. There we go. So we have our body in there and we encode it. We get the bytes and we encode it in UTFA and we basically get the byte array that we need to send to the service. So the other thing in here though is I may want to add different reminders to this and we can do that on the next video. For now, 
we're just gonna be passing in the prom, but in the latest videos, I'm going to be adding the reminders in this section of the code. So we can add a to-do here, uh, reminders to the question, and that way we don't forget to do this on the next one. We can just do, make sure you do it together. And then a couple of things in here that we're gonna need. We need an upload handler, and then we're gonna be, so this is how you, you basically pass in the body into an HTTP post. And then the next thing that I'm gonna need is make sure that this is set to raw. So there we go. The next thing that I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need to do a, a download handler so that we can get the data back. And we can just do that. And then download handler buffer. And then we just create it, then request. This is gonna be, so these ones are going to be set to true because I had a lot of issues with some of these. So just make sure that we are disposing the upload handler. I also need to do the same thing. Uh, there should be three that I need to dispose. And then I can do that. And the last one is going to be download. I think I had the upload, yep. And we can just do this in order. We can do the, the download, then the upload, then the certificate. And then now we can, we're ready to be able to send this request. So I'm just gonna do, actually we need to send some headers because we need to designate it's gonna be JSON. So I'm just gonna need to do content type and then you can do comma application the JSON. And you can put this in a configuration or maybe as a constant on the top. For now we can just do a string. And then we can just say yield return and we can just now send the actual request. So we can do same web request. And this is gonna basically gonna return that way we can keep running things in Unity. But it's going to, you know, once it's completed, we're going to be basically getting that request, the response back. So we can just check to make sure that the request was successful. So I can just say result. And we can check about things in here. The result is going to be if we got a connection error, or let's say that we get, we can say result equal equal to. The other one that I also had was a data processing error. And obviously you can do your own, you know, exception handling in here, any error handling that you like to do. You can do that. For now, we can just say the, you know, log it. We can say request the error and then go ahead and log it. I'm gonna put it in a log that way we don't stop things from, from running. And we can just say else. And if everything was successful at this point, we're gonna get the data, right? So how do we get the data? We can say response text or response info, and then request the down, download handler. And this has a text property that we can get the data from. And then we can just say response. This is gonna be the actual object. And we can do something like resp response actually new. And this is gonna be my chat GPT response. And remember we get the data property in here and we can set it to response info. And in later videos, we're gonna be adding an extension method to basically clean up this data because we wouldn't want all the explanations to come back in because sometimes ChatGPT may want to do that even though we tell it not to include explanations. So anyways, we can do now a callback and then you know send back our response object. And if you're noticing here, this is gonna be our action, right? And it takes a response, which is gonna basically pass this to whoever called this and we're gonna be able to call into another method and then get the response back to the logger. So I know this is a lot, and if you're not familiar with HTTP quests and responses, this might be a little intimidating, but you can just follow along to what I did to be able to implement it. Okay, so now let's go into Unity, and in Unity we're gonna be creating what's called a ChatGPT tester, and that's the one that is going to be doing all the different requests and getting the information into the log. Okay, so to do that, what I'm gonna do is I have an object in here called ChatGPT tester, and you can just create a new script and then create a game object. And once you do that, you're gonna have something like this, which is very sim simple. There's really nothing in it other than a mono behavior that doesn't have any implementation. So what we need to do here is I'm gonna do a serialized field, and then we need to bind or bound, right? That we're going to be making making a call to ChatGPT is, is the one that is going to be initializing the action. And it's gonna be just an ask button. I also need to get the, the prompt, right, that we're going to be sending to the service. So I'm just gonna do private a string, and then we can just say prompt. And in later videos, we're gonna do an object instead of just a, a string, because we're gonna be having a lot more 
implementation in it. And then the next thing that I need to do though, is I need to do an execute method that we're gonna be executing from the as button. So I can just say execute, and we can say execute prompt or just execute, I think works just fine. So right now we don't really have much, right? Other than the this implementation, I also need to do another method that it's going to be processing the response. So I'm just gonna say process response and the response is gonna be the this object right here and we can just say response. And this is where we can actually, you know, log this information. We can say logger instance. And again, you need this logger from my core package, which I'm gonna be putting in the description. And then we can just say response that data, or we can log it to the actual text box that we're gonna be, that we have. So we can, we can do that as well. So, but first we need to do a core routine in here, a core routine. And this core routine is going to be calling into our, uh, basically our uh, chat GPT client. And then it's a singleton. So now we can call the method that we just created. We need to pass in the prompt. And remember, this is gonna take a callback. So the callback is going to be the response. So I'm just gonna do a Lambda here. And then the Lambda, it's going to be calling into the process response object in here. And I'll just pass in R. So it's just a quick way of doing this. You can also use curly braces, calling to that. I mean, this, this works really well. So the other thing that I'm gonna do though is we can also add Text Mesh Pro and we can go back into Unity here and we can log it into here so you guys can see that it, you know, that it, that it's working other than looking that through the bug that log. So I never remember the name of this object for some reason, we can just go ahead and edit. And I'm just gonna do this, and I wish I use a, an easier name to remember, but we can do serializable field, and then private, and then we can just say, this is going to be the actual displayable area that has the information. So I think I call it logger.txt. And in this case, it's gonna be your answer, right? So we can say chat GPT, GPT, and then answer. And we can just basically map that to it, and then control period to bring it in. And now we should have everything that we need to be able to do this. So let's go back into Unity. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to bind a couple of things. If you go into our as button, we need to tell the as button that we're gonna be calling into the client. So I need to go ahead and associate this on the on click and then go into the tester and then call my execute. I also need to go into the tester though and then bind my as button so that it can get executed. I also need to get the answer on the right text box and then this is going to be the question that we may want to ask so for that question though we can go in here and be a little bit lazy and we can just copy and paste this so i'm going to go ahead and just copy that and paste it create a unity c sharp script with this place a hello world and basically in with the debug that log something like that works just fine and what i'm going to do is i think that's everything that we need I'm just going to go ahead and hit play and I want to see the answer display. So what I'm gonna do, because this service is already running, we can just make this a little smaller here. And basically we can just put this here and then this here. That way we can see everything, we don't need that. Okay, so I just want to focus on this area. So what I'm gonna do now that this is playing, I'm gonna go ahead and click ask. And as soon as you hit ask, you're gonna get an error. Okay, so let's see what we did incorrectly. We can double click in here. And he's saying that this object, and that's true, we didn't create a, a, a chat GPT setting. So this is actually perfectly fine. And we go into project here, and then we can go into settings. And this is an important step because it doesn't know where to go. I'm gonna go into chat GPT, chat GPT settings. We can just give it that name. So the URL though, that's gonna be the URL of the service that we're going to be using. So remember, this is the default, the default uh, service. So we can just add the URL in there and we can hit enter. And I'm also going to be setting debug equal true. We don't need an API key because right now we're using a wrapper that has already everything that it needs to authenticate. So now what we need to do is I'm gonna be creating a client in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then create empty. It's gonna be chat GPT and then our client. And we can just set this to zero, zero, zero. And I'm gonna be adding the client, so chat GPT client. And it's gonna be taking in a setting, so let's go ahead and drag it and drop it. And that's everything that we're gonna need. We can just go ahead and collapse this. 
and I'm gonna put my clients on the very top, and then we should have you know everything that we need in here, the API URL, the, the bug is set to true, and reminders, it's also showing, so which it doesn't have any information, but now we should be able to test it. We go ahead and go back and then hit play, and I'm gonna go ahead and focus on this area because we should see the information popping up in there. And you can see that the endpoint is currently no found for some reason. It says 404, no found. Okay, so I think I found the issue is we never specified the actual endpoint. So remember, this was chat GPT and then question. We need to make sure that we include that because that is the entire URL of the endpoint that we created. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play because it said 404. It didn't, it didn't really know how to get to the, the root. This is the route that we designated, so it needs to it needs to know how to get to that. All right, so here we got the answer. We asked create a Unity C Sharp script with displays hello world with debug log, and we got the information in here, and we also got the information in Unity. So the cool thing with this though is I can go in here, and if I wanted to add something different, we can say create I don't know ten cubes in Unity with C Sharp and rotate them, we can say 180 degrees on Y. And we can just change the question like that and then just go ahead and hit play and then just ask the question one more time. So we can go in here and then just put this on the right. And you can see that we did get the question that we asked, create 10 cubes in Unity with C sharp and rotate them 180 degrees. Right now, there's not gonna be, those cubes are not gonna be created because we're just displaying the information, but in the future, we could actually make sense of what we're getting back and run, and basically run it on runtime with Unity, which is what I did in my final prototype. So let's just wait and see what happens this time around. Okay, so we did get the answers in here, and you can see that it is logging, and we can see the whole thing. I can see you can attach the script with Unity scene, and when the scene is played, blah, 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 and I can also see it created a loop, which is really cool. You can also see it here because we have the box set to true. And it's looping through, you know, 10 iterations, instantiating a cube prefab, which in this case is will cause an error unless you had the cube prefab already associated. But let's say that we do, we have a script that it's fully, you know, it could fully, fully work in Unity. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you today. So in the next video, we're gonna be starting to look into how we can run this in Unity by using the Roslyn runtime compiler and how we can basically bind to some of these methods by using that compiler. So that's everything for today, guys. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.